Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video I am going to show you an insanely overpowered classic samurai build using the best katana you can find in Shadow of the Earth Tree. This blade is an extraordinary weapon completely capable of eliminating the most difficult enemies of the DLC incredibly fast. Unlike the other weapons of this class, the great katana is infusible, which means you can use different abilities and damage types to make your build more versatile and in some cases more powerful. It also has a passive bleed buildup that can be boosted significantly if we combine it with blood flame blade. Anyways, it is important to not rely completely on bleed, cause most of the new bosses are quite resistant to this status effect. The best affinity we can use with the great katana is quality. This way we will get a B scaling on strength and dexterity pushing the AR of the weapon to the limits. But it is important to mention that for a lower level build, it might be better to use heavy or keen affinity. There are multiple ways to build this weapon and get a remarkable performance out of it, but I will show you the setup I believe is the strongest one. Even so, I will explain some good alternative ways to effectively use this fantastic blade and dominate the entire game easily. This weapon can be obtained as soon as you enter the DLC. All you have to do is loot it from the ground in this lake right before facing the Ghost Flame Dragon. My favorite feature of this katana is that it's not complicated to use at all and every player can find an amazing way to use it according to their playstyle. First of all, I'm going to show you the build and then we will be the very major boss of the game and the DLC without taking a single hit. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Today I got you with 3 versions of this build. I wouldn't like to be repetitive, that's why I will explain first the things that we'll use on every one of them and then I will address their respective differences. We need any weapon with the Raptor of the Mistache of War to be able to dodge the Mikela's AoE over a damn boss fight. And we need any seal we have available to cast our main buffs and it doesn't need to be upgraded. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Shard of Alexander, and the Rodent Wings or Insignia. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. But you know that if you don't want to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear, you can use any other you find useful and I recommend you the Stone Barb Crack Tear. With this build, we are not going to be dealing only physical damage. Thanks to Blood Flame Blade, we are going to be dealing fire damage as well. But that is not going to be significant to boost it with Hall of Shabriri. So I prefer to use Blood Ball Aromatic because it will increase my physical damage by 30% and it will dramatically increase my total stamina. But if you don't like crafting, feel free to to use flame grant me strength and this weapon consumes a decent amount of stamina so be sure to craft some pickle turtle necks to boost your stamina regeneration speed now i will explain the key differences of the most powerful version of this build we will use the great katana on plus 25 with the repeating thrust of war on the quality affinity and i am going to use the land of reeds armor set merely for aesthetical reasons to fit the style of this build so feel free to use any other armor set you want but we are crafting a classic samurai build and this armor set is the one that gets closer to that look and in this in this version we are going to use the Millicent's Prosthesis to stack the repetitive attacks of the repeating Thrust Ash of War with the Rodding Windsor Insignia and the Thorny Crack Tear. This is the most broken one cause it will effectively use all the resources of this build. And with the repeating Thrust skill we are going to deal Pierce damage which is going to be effective in most scenarios. The second version will be the weapon upgraded to plus 25 in the quality affinity as well but with the Stormblade Ash of War. This one is very powerful as well but it's going to be more effective in scenarios where you have to fight multiple enemies or against bosses that don't wear a heavy armor. With this one we will use the Divine Beast Helm that will increase the damage of the Storm skills by 4% and it will stack with the Enraged Divine Beast for a total of 14%. This one is not as fast as the other one so feel free to change the Roaring Windsor Insignia for the Blade of Mercy for example that will increase your damage after dealing a critical hit. And the final version is very similar to the first one cause we are going to use the Blood Tax Ash of War which is basically the same animation than Repeating Thrust but it has a passive healing effect. It deals a little bit of less damage and it costs more if but it helps to build the status effect a little bit faster. Just a little bit guys, it's not very significant. But we can compensate the lack of damage of this build using the full Ansback set. I don't know why this skill is boosted by this armor set but fortunately it is. So technically we can say that this is a safer version of the first configuration of this build. But as you know the Ansback set doesn't absorb that much damage so it is pretty much the same to me so I prefer using repeating trust. And this one uses the same talisman setup of the first one. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 20 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 67 on Strength, 65 on Dexterity and 25 on Fate. Golden Bow, Flame, Grand Beam Strength and Blood Flame Blade are going to be our main buffs. In this case we are not going to use Hall of Shabriri cause it's not worth it at all. And as you can see I have my Scattery Blessing on the level 20 and if you want to deal as much damage as I do, I do recommend you to have it on level 20 as well. So without anything further to say, what do you say if we begin with the boss fights? Okay guys, let's go crazy. Me? 
amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful, baby. Destructive. <laughs> okay, let's go. This is crazy, bro. Amazing. Oh! <laughs> Let's do this! It needs to happen now, baby. Oh my god! What is going on, bro? Oh, I missed one. No way. Okay, maybe this one, please. Do this. Oh, oh, let's go, baby. Finally, <laughs> the depths of your come on, come on, come on. Come on. Let's go. And let's wait just a little bit. Pay attention here. Now. Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Come on. Oh my god, you can't be serious. I am too close to this guy. Amazing. Let's destroy him, guys. Come on. Oh! <laughs> Holy! <laughs> Let's destroy him. Oh, bad boy. Oh, bad boy. Goodbye, baby. Nice, baby. Let's go. No, oh, this time I actually use it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. No. <laughs> I hate that attack with my life. What are you doing, buddy? You are committing. S Let's go. Wow, I don't know how I'm alive, bro. Let's go. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's destroy it, baby. Oh, no, dude. Oh, 
baby, I'm taking this one, bro. <laughs> what is up with this guy? Nice. Take those, buddy. Take this. Nice. So we already did a little bit of stance damage. That's good. Maybe this is going to help. Okay. Oh, amazing. Amazing damage. Come on, homie. Do your thing. Oh, man. Amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful, baby. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Let's go. Come on, that is what I am talking about, baby. Let's go. 